back to square root of Woodcraft Design. Today I'm going to do a little something different. I'm going to make this here console table or console cabinet rather to uh, go inside the kitchen area. I have some plans that I downloaded from Pinterest, but it's for a barn door TV stand. But I'm making a cabinet, so I have to do some modifications to it. I'm going to use the barn doors. I'm going to install the barn doors, but I just want it to be taller than a TV stand. And I also want the shelves inside of it to be arranged differently. So I'm going to have to do some modifications to these plans as I go along. But what I have here right now is a four by eight piece of plywood. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna cut the bottom, the base, I'm gonna cut the two sides, and I'm also gonna cut the initial top. But I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step instructions on how I get this done. Stay tuned. Here I am marking the 72 inch length for the baseboard. I'm using the Cray cross-cut jig along with the circular saw to make this cut. Here I'm measuring out the width of the baseboard, which is 15 and a quarter inches. I use the T-square to mark my 15 and a quarter inch line. I use this line as a guide when making the cut with the circular saw. On the opposite end of the board, I measure 15 and a quarter inches. In order to make a 15 and a quarter inch straight cut, I have to line up the circular saw as well as the cross cut jig on my 15 and a quarter inch mark. Once I get that lined up, I will lock it in and I will make the cut. Here I use the table saw to cut out the two sides to their final dimension. I'm measuring out 40 inches, which is the height of the cabinet. The original plan called for the measurement to be 32 and a half inches. But like I said earlier, I wanted my cabinet to be taller. I will use the miter saw to make this cut. What I'm doing here is lining up the blade with the first cut. Once I line up the blade with the first cut, then I will secure the board using a clamp and then I will make the cut. Got the table saw. I'm cutting two sectionals, which is a modification that I made from the original plan. The baseboard is cut into three sections. What I'm doing now is placing pocket holes so that I can secure those baseboards in place.
The Cray jig makes this process very simple. I simply align the line on the board with the lines on the Cray jig, and then I drill a hole. The Cray jig allows the bit to go in on an angle which creates the pocket hole. The board that I'm adding glue to is actually one of four of the rear legs. Each one of those legs will be attached to each of the four panels using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Here I make sure that the boards are flat and flush before I put in the pocket hole screws. I'm using the clamps to keep everything in place. One panel is complete, three more to go. What you see here is me attaching the side panel with the base board using glue and pocket hole screw. I'm using the square to keep everything at a 90 degree angle. As you can see, the cabinet is finally starting to take shape. I have a few more panels to add to be complete. Case is complete. As you can see, I added the front legs and the other two panels. Next, I will build the face frame. I find it so cool that Dr. Dre has added two deaf rappers to the big Super Bowl halftime performance for the first time. Viewers, let me give you a quick update on where I am when it comes to building the barn door cabinet. As you can see here, I've got the base and the body put together so far. The next step is to make a door frame. And the purpose of the door frame is just to give it a better look when you 
when the barn doors are open, you'll see the door frame instead of seeing these plywood. As you can see here, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there is a overhang on this panel that I put here and I'm about to trim that off with the uh, flush trim bit. And once I do that, then I'll go ahead and start building the doors. And then I will put the barn door rails in place, put the backing on it, make the shelves. So just stay tuned, it's coming along. Here I'm preparing to cut the rails and styles for the face frame. Here what I'm doing is I'm taking the top portion of the face frame and aligning it with the top of the cabinet. Next, I'm going to take the bottom of the face frame and line it up with the cabinet. Then I'm going to measure the styles. And then I'm going to cut those and place them in place, put them in place. These are called rails, <laughs> and these are called styles. So I'm taking the top rail, put it in place. I'm gonna put the bottom rail in place. Then I'm gonna measure the styles between the two rails. And I'm gonna cut those and put them into place. Stay tuned. I'm using a miter saw to cut the styles. I'm using the extension arms of the stand to make the repeated cuts. What you see me doing now is called creeping up on the cut. And what that means is that in order to get that style to fit properly, I have to take a little bit off each time. That's why you see me going back and forth to the, to the miter saw, because I'm taking off a little bit so I can get that style to fit properly. I realized that the bottom rail was not flush with the bottom frame. So what I had to do when I adjusted it, I had to go back to readjust the styles. Again, creeping up on the cut. over to the pocket hole jig to cut pocket holes so I can attach them to the top and the bottom rail. The clamp that you see me using here is called a pocket hole clamp. It has a middle rod that inserts into the pocket hole, allowing me to clamp the two pieces together. Hey, I'm 
drilling the hole for the adjustable shelf. I'm using a jig called Cabinet Make, made by Milescraft. I simply draw a center line on the cabinet, and I line the jig up with the center line, and I drill nine holes. One in the middle, four on the top, and four on the bottom. Here at the table saw, I'm cutting out the shell. I need three, one for the left, one for the right, and one for the center. I've completed making the shells, the holes for the shells. Um, I also cut out the shell boards and placed them inside. I use these shelf pins. I don't know if you can see that. I use these shelf pins and install them so that I can put the shelf board inside. Next, what I'm going to do is that I, I made these pocket holes here just to adjoin this piece of wood. But now I'm going to fill these pocket holes with these plugs that I'm going to make. I'm going to make these plugs here and I'm going to fill these pocket holes like that with some glue and sanding it down so you won't be able to see it. I have 40 of those to make. I'm gonna show you how I do that right now. What I have here is a two by four that I made into this jig. A jig is something that you can make to help you or to simplify something that you're trying to do on a specific tool. Well, this jig helps me cut out those little caps for the pocket holes that I showed you a few minutes ago. I'm gonna show you how I do that. As you can see, I have a pocket hole right here. And what I do is I take one of these dowels and I stick it there and then I simply cut it off. Let me show you. There's a hole there that I can push a tool into to get the cut out. And it comes out looking like this. I have to make 40 of these to place in the pocket holes that I made for the cabinet. Stay tuned. Here's how I place the wooden plugs inside the pocket holes using wood glue. Sand down the plugs until the surface is flat. Here I'm creating the frame for the two barn doors. I'm using one by fours and I'm connecting them with one and a quarter inch pocket hole screw. I'm using the frame there to keep a 90 degree angle, keep everything square. Here's a photo of the pocket hole clamp in use. I use it to hold both pieces of wood together as I insert the screw. This is the photo of the barn door frame. I simply cut one by threes to length and screwed them in with pocket holes. I cut a piece of bead board to size and I attached it using brad nails and glue. 
and since this cabinet is a farmhouse style, I put the X's in the barn doors using again nails and glue. Viewers, welcome back to Square and Rule Woodcraft Design. In continuing with the making of the barn door cabinet, what I have here is three pieces of two by eights that I'm going to use to make the top. What I'm doing now is just lining everything up to see how I'm going to place the top on the cabinet. What I try to look for in these boards is design where they have a lot of different features on it, such as these knots and uh, grain patterns, just to make sure that I'm going to get the best design from the pieces that I'm using. And I just lined them up to see where they're gonna go. What I'm going to do next is to take these three boards to the planer and plane them down so I can get a smooth surface. And then I'm going to route the edges to keep them round. I really don't want them to be a sharp edge. Then I'm gonna route the edges and then I'm gonna place them back on top for alignment again. And this time I'm going to mark where I'm going to put the dowels. Because in order to put these two boards together, I'm going to use dowels. And uh, the dowels are just little wooden pieces that go into the board that are able to line these boards up, glue them together, and uh, so they become one piece. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to take you through step by step of how I'm going to create the top. I'm back. What I've completed so far, I took the three two by eights to the planer and I planed one side, nice and smooth. Then I brought the boards back to the cabinet. I laid them out again and I made my marks of where I wanted the dowels to go. These are the dowels. And I made my mark on the board where I wanted the dowels to go. And I had to make a mark on each board because the dowels go in between so they have to match up. I want to explain to you what I'm going to use to make the holes. This is called a Jensen. It's a dowel jig. And what it does is that you line the holes, okay, so you line the hole with the line that you have on the on the board and it makes the hole for you. And then you drill a hole and it makes the hole for you. It just makes sure it what it does is just make sure is that the hole on this board lines up with the hole on that board so that they can join. Here I'm drilling the hole for the dowels using the Jensen dowel jig. It's crucial that the dowel holes on each board lines up perfectly. If they don't, the cabinet top surface will be uneven. As you can see, the dial holes on each board lined up perfectly. I will have to use clamps to completely close the gaps in each board.
I used a router with a roundover bit to round the edges of the cabinet top. The cabinet is beginning to show some style. I painted the inside white. I stained the face frame with a stain called Worn Navy. In this picture, you can see the four legs. I painted those, or I stained those with a stain called Dark Walnut. The cabinet top will also be stained with Dark Walnut. Also notice that you don't see any of the pocket holes. staining the cabinet top and the three shelves. I think they came out great. I completed staining the barred doors. I used worn navy and a stain called gunstock. A mixture of the two gave me the rustic look you see here. Here I'm attaching the rail hangers to the barn doors. The next step is to fasten the cabinet top to the cabinet. I previously cut these slots into the cabinet using a router and a straight bit. I'm using these cabinet top fasteners to attach the cabinet top.
placed the cabin in the breakfast area and added some decorative items inside and on top to give you a better idea of how it's going to look when decorated. 